Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. As part of this year's festivities, alto saxophonist and composer and educator David Benny will be blessing the stage and he's performing selections off his critically acclaimed album Graylin Epicenter. And this album has some dynamic performances. I'm talking about guest performances by the likes of vocalist Gretchen Parlato, Brian Blade on drums, Wayne Kranz on guitar, and the thing that I really liked about David over his last 30 years is that he's taken elements of avant-garde as well as straight ahead and he's kind of formed his own unique style as well as his abrasive and straight ahead compositions. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about his latest CD. We're going to talk about him growing up in LA, him coming to New York at 19 studying with great saxophone masters like George Coleman as well as Dave Liebman. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of David Benny live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. Center, your latest CD, and it's on your Mythology Records imprint, and you have a heavyweight of artists on here, and I'm talking Craig Taborn, you've got Brian Blade, you've got Gretchen Parlato, you've got Wayne Krantz, and the compositions on this album are really out there. <laughs> okay, well thanks. I, I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> it is. All right. Yeah, I'm, I was, uh, it's kind of, uh, that record and the one after Barefooted Town, I was kind of going for a, a certain kind of writing, a very harmonic, a lot of motion harmonically, and so it, it's a little bit different than some of my earlier records, but um, and they're very involved, and then they also kind of transform, as you probably know, sometimes between instrumental music into even some vocal things every once in a while. And uh, I just wanted to make it sort of an epic thing, which I guess is what it is. You know? It was epic because the first the opening track, you've got two dynamic drummers 
opening the CD. That's true, yeah. Dan and, and Brian together, Dan Weiss and Brian Blade. And uh, we did a, a gig, well, both of them play with me often. And so uh, we did a gig once at the 55 Bar in New York where we just played quartet, two drums, and uh, Thomas Morgan on bass and myself. And it worked great. So I always had, that was a few years ago, I had it in my head to uh, do that at some point on a record. And this came up, and I just put them both on the record, and on a few tunes they play together, and it, I'm really happy with the result. You know, David, when I was listening to this record for the first time, it kind of took me back to those really early 70s fusion, almost borderline rock records like Miles Davis and even borderline weather report. Was that where you were going with this? Well, I mean, you know, I, wasn't, I was just trying to write my music, but my, you know, I grew up then. So my early bands when I was in my teens, um, that was what I would go and see. I was into Weather Report and, of course, Miles and uh, all the, you know, Stanley Clark and Lenny White and, and uh, you know, McLaughlin and, like, all the, a lot of those fusion bands. And I liked a lot of those records, Jan Hammer. I liked the way they put them together and they were kind of George Duke, who's one of my heroes. They, they had big orchestration. They, had a, uh, they went from classical music to rock to, you know, there's a Tony Williams record called The Joy of Flying from that period that's incredible. He does a duet with Cecil Taylor. He does like a rock trio thing with Ronnie Montrose. He does stuff with Herbie, uh, you know, Jan Hammer, George Benson. It's like all over the place and it completely works for me. So I've never been afraid to kind of throw everything into the pot. And uh, that's sort of what I did on that record. And I guess it probably comes from growing up with that music, you know. I could tell. I mean, because it works for you. I mean, and just your compositions you're talking about, it, it really kind of really take and, and it's like you're not stagnant when you're writing. It's like there's a continuation or a continuum of where you want to go musically. Yeah, well, hopefully. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's the point for me. I mean, it's... There may be all these influences in my past. When I'm writing this stuff, it's purely coming from what I'm thinking in the moment and trying to just extend an idea, basically. I'm not really thinking about the other stuff that we're talking about now so much. Um, but then after the fact, I can go back and look at it and see, oh, this is probably from this kind of you know, history and this is from this. And it's, you know, just, they're all just what I'm feeling, you know, and, and not everything on that record is, you know, there's some stuff with Chris Potter, who we just played with, um, you know, that's just like quintet also. So there's the balance of that stuff, but uh, I don't know. In, in the future, there's going to be a lot of even crazier stuff. I'm working on like a, a pop record basically right now and also a, a basically a classical record that's through composed string orchestra stuff that's heavy, heavy writing. No, really no improvisation. So there's a lot of, gonna be a lot more, you know, crazy stuff coming.
you grew up in Southern California and um, by way of Florida and you, I understand, really kind of came into the saxophone kind of in your teens. I did. I, I asked my parents to get me a saxophone when I was 12. I played a little bit. I quit when I was 13. I went back to it when I was 14, and then I, that was it. And then pretty much right after that, I knew I was even going to move to New York and do the whole thing. Uh, and I did as soon as I turned 19, and I've been in New York ever since, and it's been fantastic. But, you know, yeah, I just, I don't know why. My parents were not musicians. Nobody in my family were musicians, but they had great records, you know, Train and Miles, and, and my dad was also into, like, Hendrix and Sly Stone and all that stuff. And I was, I was way into that, too. So, um, you know, it was just, I had a good musical background as far as listening from my parents. And I just, somehow, it, it attracted me, and it's never gone away. <laughs> when you came here in 19, you studied with some of the masters of the saxophone, and Dave Liebman was one of them. And what was it about some of the mentors that you studied with um, that kind of enhanced the music that you wanted to play now? Um, well, I mean, you know, it's all a continuum, you know? I mean, those guys were the guys I grew up listening to and studied from, and I'm, you know, carrying the torch, I guess, too. Not that Liebman is still very much, you know, doing it, too. I'm about to go on the road with him, actually, which is ironic. But we're about to do a saxophone quartet tour in, in uh, Quebec. But, you know, it's just a continuum, you know? It's like the new generation comes along and takes and, and you know, hopefully builds on it. And, and those guys were the, the teachers, you know, and, and still are. I still listen to all the old masters and all the, you know, I'm not talking Liebman old, I'm talking way older than that. Uh, um, all of that stuff, you know, from the beginning of the jazz history. And I listened, I'm a huge, as anyone knows, listener of all kinds of music. So I'm really involved with electronic music and rock and pop and uh, classical music and everything too. But I, I take from all of that, I learn from all of it, you know, and it, it becomes part of my music, which becomes part of the students you saw sitting out there, you know what I mean? And, and it continues on, you know. <laughs> Mythology Records is your record label that you started over a decade ago, and it seems like you're having more success doing your music independently versus through the majors. And plus, what I'm seeing too is that you have a very strong following, which is growing and growing by word of mouth. 
Yeah, that's uh, it's, a, it's been great actually, and the following is always growing, and and uh, and I do have a good following, which is that's why it's funny. It's, I never got onto the the majors, although they used to come by and and uh, to the gigs and always say, you know, you're our favorite artist and stuff, but they wouldn't sign me. I'm not sure why. I probably you know, didn't wear the right clothes or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess I have jeans, you know, so I'm a California kid. But um, I don't know. You know, I, I just decided to start my own label because I knew I could do exactly what I wanted to do at any point. I still record for Criss Cross and some other small labels. But, you know, mythology has been successful in the sense that those records sell because I have a big enough following to to make money off of it. And it took a while, you know, but uh, now those records sell and I don't really do much, you know, I don't have, I don't really try to get distribution, I just send them to like CD Baby or whatever and they put them out. Um, but they sell because of the fan base, basically, you know, people find this stuff, you know. <laughs> jazz music mean to you? Jazz music means to me, um, I mean, I know there's a lot of discussion about that lately and about the term and everything. And uh, Bam. Yeah, I know. And I know Nick Listen. I know I like Nick Listen. He's a great guy. I, you know, I, I kind of stay away from that argument just because, or, or discussion, because for me personally, it doesn't concern me. I, I, I love music, all kinds of music. I, I love, you know, jazz has been a huge influence on me. Um, and I really don't care what music is called. You know, I, I just, I love it all. And that, but there's something about, you know, jazz music that always just touched me deeply. And just, you know, when I listen to it and I go back, I'm constantly listening to mostly the masters, you know. Um, it just somehow, through everything, it just feels like um, such an honest, warm thing when it's when it's played with honesty, you know. And and it's just like no other music. And the balance of it's the most. Um, I try to get young people into it more sometimes because it's the most free music you you can have. It, it's 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 left up to the personality, which is what this country is about, you know. Um, and that's why I don't like the the whole the whole racial argument involved and everything because it's we've tried to make this country uh, for everybody and music is for everybody and I just think that you know we should all just be playing it together talking about it together and you know 
there shouldn't be any argument about things, I think, you know. There's no point. There's no point to me, you know. Um, and I know there is, uh, are points for other people, and that's fine. You know, I, I'm not, you know, bashing anybody, but for me personally, I just want to make good music and involve everybody. I don't care what color, what, where it comes from, where it's going. I just, just want to make good music and affect people, you know. But jazz is part of all of that. You know, it's, as far as my influences, and, and so is every other category. But I still really hear it as music. Anyone who knows me knows I put on Charles Ives, and, and then I put on, you know, Charlie Parker, and then I put on, you know, Square Pusher, and, you know, I, every, everyone knows that. And, I, and it's just seamless for me. It all seems like the same thing. Everybody's just ex expressing an energy and emotion, and it's just a different way of doing it. It's a different, you know, accent. It's a language with different accents. That's the way I see it, you know. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit, Michigan. I'd like to personally thank Mr. David Benny for his time, as well as the staff and management and festival organizers of this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.